Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Wow, what a scary day today is, isn't it? Well, I hope uh, each and every one of you is dressed and ready for Halloween. Actually, I myself uh, do not dress up. Uh, this is not one of my favorite uh what do we call it, holidays, and, um, but, but I know the entire city, the country loves Halloween, everybody loves dressing up, it's, it's, uh, it's fun, it's entertaining, and it's uh, good for so many. Well, what I do is just the opposite of it. I believe uh, the work that I do uh, and everything I talk about is peeling away masks. It's peeling away layers and titles so that uh, we become comfortable with who we are. And I, I think it's great that we all have a day to play. Uh, I think that's what Halloween has become, a day to entertain and to dress up and be whatever it is we want to. Uh, and that's a good thing, isn't it? Some of us have to peel away the layers and the labels and the masks to be who we want to be. And there's so many who dress up and on that one day, they become what they feel like being. What a contradiction, what a beautiful uh, dichotomy. It's the true yin-yang, the black and white, when we look at something in anything. It's uh, to see the other side of it, the dark and the shadow, the good, bad, black, white. So if you are out there trick-or-treating uh, with your kids, uh, I hope you have an incredible day. Be safe and uh, have fun partying and all the masks that you are wearing. Enjoy being the person that you are impersonating in pers uh, or personifying, right? I guess uh, that sets us uh, to the talk and the discussion that we are to have today. Earlier today, I put a post from uh, my dentist. I love Dr. Yakikin, and uh, it was uh, a testimonial by him because of uh, me using hypnosis for the longest years that I recall from the time that I started doing hypnotherapy. I chose not to have anesthetics. And uh, that every time we are doing a dental work, I do self-hypnosis. I sit there, close my eyes, and he knows this. They give me about five minutes. I go, uh, I tap within, do my self-hypnosis, and uh, very concentrated because I already know what uh, part of my mouth they will be working on or what tooth they're going to be working on. So I do my self-hypnosis and concentrate on that part. And uh, when he comes to do the work, the dental work, and it doesn't matter if it is just a regular cavity, which is like nominal, or doing crown work, or I've had four, five root canals with absolutely no anesthetic, even the one that it's right here in the front, which has got three nerves instead of the ones in the back, even the wisdom teeth that have two nerves going into our, um, our root. And that's called the power of mind over matter. And that's one of the things that I teach to my clients is self-hypnosis. Yes, I do teach self-hypnosis. And all the modalities and everything else that my clients come in and uh, we work together uh, because it could be about weight, it 
can be about smoking, it could be about insomnia or anxiety attack. No matter what it is, even when I'm sitting in the chair at the dentist's office, some people even have butterflies just to walk into a dentist's office. The whole thing is about having that self-esteem and knowing I'll be okay. That if I want to drop weight or if my client wants to drop weight, I ask about the why. Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to become thinner? Why do you want to stop smoking if you have been smoking for 22 years, right? So our why matters as much as what it is that we want to create. It's not because we are stuck on the why. It's just why do you want the million dollars? Why do you want everything that you want to make a change? And because of that, I like to treat the person as a whole. Today I am meeting someone at lunch and they asked to meet with me because they said, you know, I see you, I know you, I've seen you around, I know you do some kind of a healing work, but I don't really know what you do because one friend has told me that you helped her child with something and I know you talk about hypnosis, but I see you more of a coach. I've seen you speak. Well, I speak to transform. I speak at companies, uh, I speak on stages. I, you can call me a motivational, transformational speaker. But the tools I use with my clients are hypnosis and hypnotherapy. I am a certified clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. So with the tools that I have, it's so much easier for me to guide and coach my clients to where they want to be and what they want to achieve. And I want to be, um, This is going to sound interesting because just like being on the dentist chair as a patient, I'm also a guide to myself. Like any story or any movie, there is a part of the story, there is a hero, there is a villain, and there is a guide, a mentor, and someone that that comes and saves the hero, the character, the main character. And the part of the story, it's always at the ending. If it's a soap opera, it has to be a continuum, right? So it does not always end happily ever after, unless it's a 90 minute or two hour movie. And usually the main character comes out winning or a happy ending. Or the sad ending, which leaves us going, oh, I didn't think that's how it's going to end. But that's what life is. It's there is either a happy ending, uh, it's a, they're successful, or there is something that is the cliffhanger and there's the continuum. I was asked, what do I want in my life? And if... It was a part of my homework that my coach asked me to do. So I had to sit back and write. I thought it would be like about half a paragraph or even a paragraph, even a page of where are significant things in my life that has impacted me or I have created with my limiting beliefs, certain aspects that ha have been a trigger that has created a limiting belief to where I am today and where I want to go. So I became my own student. I became the student again and had someone else help me. And looking at that, I realized 
that in life we are so much a student and a coach, a boss, a leader, as much as a follower. And uh, someone asked me, are you a follower or a leader? My first inclination was, I'm a follower. But then they told me, no, you're a leader. And yes, I have led many things, and yet I have followed. So we are not one or the other. We are just the sign of infinity in every aspect of our life. So we may have a lot of good in us, but I am sure we have done things that has been wrong or we have fibbed in life. We have uh, gone after something and somehow come short or failed. But it's about what we do consistently that sets us as a leader, as a guide, as a coach, that makes the difference. I think uh, parents are leaders, but they have been followers because they had parents of their own. So where do we stand in life? It doesn't matter anymore once we make the decision. So I've made the decision and starting next month, I have been asked and invited and I will be starting my own podcast on LA Talk Radio now. And I am excited about that. And there's few other things that are in the works. My event for 3E is already booked. So please save the date, ladies. A day dedicated to women. It's March 24th of next year. And all that is we make a choice, we make a decision, and we make that decision the right decision. What decision have you not made for yourself? What has created a phobic reaction, a block, or a fear in your life? And when you believe you have it or you can identify it, like what I did, I went back all the way from my childhood and and started writing significant times in my life that just came flowing to me. And it does not have to be in sync. It does not have to be in order. Whatever whatever you can remember, just go ahead and just jot it down. It could be from school time, when you were fourth grade. It could be when you were 17 years old. This happened. And if you can put it in certain categories, it becomes easier for you to see significant things. Let me give you an example. I have been on two major auto accidents. Uh, Thank God they were not fatal because I would not be here and no one else got injured. Well, not bad injury, but it has been two auto accidents with injuries. I was injured and other people in the car have been injured. Now, When thinking about those two auto accidents, I can take that and make it more detailed. At what age? What was happening in my life? Who was I with? Where were we going? What was happening inside the car? What was the conversation, the emotions? What was going on? And we're talking about only two accidents. The first time, that I got into an accident. It was at a summer vacation long time ago when I was probably about 10 or 11 years old. And I was with a friend. Uh, We left our, um, and if you get to listen to this, Alex, you will remember this. We left the summer home to go and get ice because there was no ice. And as we're driving the car, uh, 
at that time, there was a cigarette. I lit the cigarette and he turned around to get a puff of the cigarette and we were talking and laughing. And at that very moment, there was the confusion and this car rolled over, rolled over, rolled over and landed upside down. Well, thankfully, I was thrown to the back seat. He was thrown to the passenger seat. The door was smashed. The rooftop had been smashed. The wheel had come out. So if he had been left where he was, he would have been uh, smashed inside the car. But the whole thing is when they came and yanked the door and helped us out, we stood up looking at each other and I remember even to this day him saying Lisa are you okay Lisa are you okay and I can hear him and I said yes so by the time that there was neighbors and everyone they came and helped us out we got out and we looked at each other and the first thing we did was oh my god we are okay but oh what are parents going to say? It, is, it was not about us. It was, oh, we're in trouble. Oh, we're going to get punished. So that scene in itself, if we take only that one scene, there's the blame, there's the guilt, and there was pain, which we didn't feel until later. But by the time they took us to the summer house, it was not about us because each mother was in a panic where we were and when they saw us and they found out about the car there was panic about all the things that they were telling us we did wrong we were at fault so the message of that child that received was you know i'm standing here i'm okay and one person from the back turned around and said, thank God you guys are okay. It was like, wow, that's right. They are okay. So reality is not so much of what happens, but the emotion, that moment of trauma, that moment of significance, what we hear, what we see, what we feel, is what gets embedded in our subconscious mind. So today, by posting about me doing the hypnosis on the dental, uh, one of the comments was, I've had issues with dentistry since childhood. There's always a tra trigger that creates anxiety, creates fear or panic. And if we take that and take it to the second auto accident that I had or any other accidents or trauma or uh, things that happen, if that inner child believes I don't matter and I'm going to get, get punished, right? The first thing that little child is going to do is either defend, protect, or shut down. So what I do to help my clients is peel away the layers, the masks, and find the underlying cause effect so we can make that trigger numb not even numb it's like having electricity and bypassing that electrical current so that every time you touch it it doesn't zap you if that makes sense and by doing so and for that to be out of order and that trigger no longer triggers that person to fear to anxiety to withdraw to panic then they can continue being in situations at more ease, calm, and relaxed situation. And that's how we bypass either 
numbing the gum so there is absolutely no pain while they are drilling, while they are putting the air and water pick. Oh, which reminds me, while I was hypnotized one time, uh, this is what happened. I hypnotized myself that every time I hear the drill, my gum will become number and number, number and number. I am becoming number and number in this tooth. This tooth, the entire nerve, is becoming number and number. There is absolutely no feeling in there. And this is how I do self-hypnosis. And as I breathe through it, I bring more inner uh, placebo, mind anesthesia into my nerve endings. And that's how every time they drill, it becomes number and number, right? So I had the drill. I had every time I f hear the air, it's going to clear it. It's going to cleanse it. It's going to release it. And I had forgotten about the water pick. So the moment Dr. Yekikian one time used the water pick, I was like, whoa. And then he said, what happened? And I said, oh, I forgot the water. So give me a moment. And then I did the self-hypnosis. I added the water pick into it. And then boom, he could do the rest of the work. This entire thing, today's discussion, is how much power we have once we can tap within ourselves and that does heal within we can and sometimes just like me wanting a coach asking for a business coach or when we want to have our money safeguarded we go to a bank and they help safeguard our money going to the doctor having a teacher having an attorney we all our leaders and must follow and it's all okay because that's what life is creating that sense of harmony that inner child looking up to the adult right here and even within us we have a parent that oversees overlooks and takes care of us so I hope today's session made a difference and if you want to explore your own fears, anxieties, I am here, I am here to help you. Just contact me. You can call me at 818-551-1501 or email me at info at healwithin.com. I look forward to all your questions. I look forward to be of assistance to you and your loved ones also write down take a moment take a few moments take an afternoon off write down significant times that has impacted and made a difference in your life and it doesn't matter if it's good or bad every single impact every single scene has touched us emotionally, physically, mentally. Keep the best. Let's dump the rest. Until next week, you have an amazing day. Go play, go dress up, and enjoy being who you are today. God bless.